Sports. We are platform. We are MC. James Shields' first game back at the Trop went like a dream. He had his old teammates chasing for seven shutout innings in a 6-0 Royals victory. Alex All-Star gave James all the offense he would need and now hopes it's only a sign of more good times to come. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tonight from St. Petersburg, Florida, game two of this three-game series, the Royals and the Rays. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you. Last night was almost an inspiring moment. James Shields returns to the team he pitched for for 12 years in their organization and Rex seven shutout innings, struck out 10 batters, and he felt great. He was so excited about the win. I love the energy the whole team showed. They, they, they were patient at the plate. They picked on Odorizzi, but James Shields really worked with Salvador well. It was great to see the passion that Salvi was showing and a fun, fun way to see James Shields get himself right again. And tonight it will be Jason Vargas. And how about the Royals starting pitcher's success against the Rays this year? Look at those numbers. They've been dominant, and believe me, the Rays know it. They were the hottest team in the world coming into last night's game, and starting pitching again shut them down. That's the whole key. The game can be complicated at times, but really, pretty simple. You execute your pitches, those hitters cannot hit it. And when you defend like the Royals do, that makes it even more frustrating for them. Great to see the pitching, though. That wins everything. Vargas beat the Rays back in April, took a shutout into the ninth inning before Zobris took him deep. And Hellickson, his first start of the year after the elbow problem last season. Yet the important thing is to get him early. Don't let him get any confidence going in his first start of the year. Put that self down in his mind and get that frenzy hitting going. They scored two early and then four in the eighth and ninth. The Royals try and make it two in a row over the Rays at the Trump.
Sports Kansas City, the Midsummer Classic, a week from tonight from Target Field. Tonight, the Royals continue their series with the Rays live from Tropicana Field. It is the second of three, and in the opener, Alex Gordon, one of the Royals All-Stars, broke out of a slump. He had been three for his previous 43 at-bats, but last night, a three-hit game. He went three for five, and playing like an All-Star, tied for the team lead with 44 RBIs, and great that it happened right here in St. Petersburg. Joel Goldberg back at Tropicana Field. This place used to be miserable for him. From 2007 to 2010, 121 players in the big leagues had at least 37 at-bats here at Tropicana Field, and all of them had at least six hits, except for Alex, who in that stretch had none. He was 0 for 37 in his career. He said he was aware of it, and he led off the game in 2011 with a double ended that stretch and he went from 0 for 37 to 283 since and he's 367 in his last eight games so this has been a much better place for Alex and the Royals and they'll try to get to Jeremy Hellickson who makes his 2014 season debut first pitch coming up next. Come in and visit the Kansas City area Chevy dealers and make your move to Chevrolet today. By the Missouri Lottery, we try the new Lucky Sevens playbook every day. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. It's hot and humid outside, but a comfortable 72 degrees inside the trop. Let's check out your Midwest Ford dealer starting lineup. Lorenzo Cain will lead things off. He had a couple of base hits and also two steals last night. Hosmer goes two and pretty much the same lineup. Billy Butler, second straight game, hitting seven. Yeah, Billy's got some really good numbers off of Hellickson. Hopefully, he'll continue to rake him. Try to get this guy early. Hellickson, he's got a two-seam fastball that he'll throw. He's 87 and 90, not overpowering. Curveball, his changeup is his best pitch. He'll throw a couple of different uh, looks with that changeup, but it's mainly two seam sinkers, changeups. Works very slowly. Defensively, we have highlighted Ben Zobrist. He is a very good baseball player. He can play anywhere on the diamond and does them all well. Everything he's but pitch and catch, and that's two spots he probably would prefer to stay away from, but he's a solid player. A lot of teams like him. Versatility is always a key. 
Sean Rodriguez, he's DH tonight. He's the other very versatile player for Joe Madden in the Rays. The crew chief, Jeff Nelson, is behind home plate. Laz Diaz at first, Mark Carlson second, Scott Barry at third. The Royals come into this game 46 and 42, three and a half games back of Detroit. And there is Hellickson. He missed the first 92 games this year because of elbow surgery. And this is his 2014 debut. Kane with a four game hit streak going. He's batting 311. He had 46 RBIs last year, has 37 already before the All Star break. He's back in center field tonight. He told me before the game that he's really getting comfortable in right field the more he plays out there. Like he made that nice run and catch down there by that bullpen last night. But either place, he says, is good for him as long as he's in the lineup. Hitting 300 in the big leagues. Being a catalyst leadoff player, you're going to get that call. Tonight's first pitch, 7-11. 72 degrees inside Tropicana Field, 86 degrees outside. Lorenzo's telling himself right now, Fizz, that was a straight fastball. First pitch of the game. Straight as a string. Hellickson admitted even in his minor league debut that he had the jitters gave up four runs and two and a third He allowed 15 runs in 18 and two-thirds innings rehabbing at triple-a Durham But he said he feels healthy. He can extend his arm again for that curve and change up Hit solidly to right field a base hit for Lorenzo Kane. So now a five-game hit streak Pretty straight. He used to throw up more cutters, especially when James Shields was here. The entire staff followed James Shields' lead with throwing cutters, but Joe Madden's not a real fan of the cutter, so he's eliminated that. Well, it's Miller time, and later in the game, we'll take a look at one of the stars that is shining. Eric Hosmer, he has been shining of late. He has hit in every single game the last seven. 11 for 29, hitting 379. To raise his batting average up over 250 again to 256. And he has a couple of doubles lately. Two hits last night, including a double that drove in a run. Royals very aggressive last night, and Kane had two stolen bases, bringing his total to 10. He saw Hellickson's best move. He's got pretty quick feet, and he is a gold glover. He won in 2012. It's a great season for him. Only one other pitcher has ever done that, win rookie of the year and a gold glove, and it was Fernando Valenzuela in his rookie season for the Dodgers. Hellickson now 27 years of age. From Des Moines, Iowa, the only raised player ever from the state of Iowa. In there. That's his signature pitch, the changeup. Doesn't look like it has a lot of movement either. You know, going back to the, his rehab assignment, minor league hitters. They love to face a guy who'd been in the big leagues and had some success. So sometimes those numbers can be a little lopsided as those guys are hungry to hit a major league. In his first two and a half years, Rex, he was terrific. 27 wins, 3.1 ERA, and then it ballooned to over five last year, but he had elbow problems. As a matter of fact, he left to start in late June because of elbow discomfort, and it was that the loose bodies they say floating around and getting caught in between bone and ligament that was causing the pain. He had the surgery in January. Modern technology is a beautiful thing. Helping these players continue to stay on the field without missing very much time. The guy with bone chips in his elbow or whether you got some stuff in your knee. They just stick those scopes in there now and suck them all out to turn the uh, vacuum on and clean it up. And it makes a big difference. Unfortunately for the Rays, they've had a lot of that trouble lately. 
Ellickson one of three starting pitchers on the disabled list the first three months. The others Matt Moore and Alex Cobb. Cobb is back. Moore done for the year. And that ball whistled down the right field line. It is hooking and going foul. Looks like his first curveball he threw. Haas waited on it. Lorenzo Kane got his legs nice and loose. In case they weren't, he ran all the way around the bases, thinking that was going to stay fair. Just a little top hand dominant from Hosmer. Got underneath it and lifts it in the air to the left side. Brandon Geyer starting in left field tonight. He'll make the catch, and there's one out. Salvador Perez will step in. He's been hitting third because of the slump of Billy Butler. Butler was at third much of the season, either hitting third or fourth, but Billy in a little bit of a slump and hitting in the seventh spot for just the first time. Last night was actually the first time since July of 2008. And everybody on the team knows they need that guy's production. 44 home runs the previous two years, only two this year. Salvador and Mike Mustakas are tied for the team lead in home runs, each with 10. Jeff Nelson in his 17th year calling balls and strikes. Wasn't very liberal with that pitch. Salvi throughout his career has had a lot of success against the Rays. He made his major league debut here August 10th, 2011. Got his first hit off a now Royal Wade Davis. He lifts that one back and out of play. Salvi leads all catchers in the American League with hits 86 but he starts just about every single day. Hitting 284 10 home runs 29 driven in. Kane has not gone yet. Joe Madden controls the running game with a lot of pitch outs. We saw one last night, but the Royals did not go. And Perez hits one well to center field. Backing up into left center corner is Desmond Jennings, so Kane must retreat to first base. Salvi hit that breaking ball and hit it pretty well. Got a little bit off the end. It's a pretty fair park here. 370 left center, 404 straight away. But Rex, that's two curveballs that have been well struck. One by Hosmer that went foul, and now one that Perez hit to the deepest part of the yard. It's that left center area. If you're asking me, so far in the 12 pitches I've seen from Hel Hellickson, not very impressed. This is fastball looks pretty straight. His changeup looks straight, and that, that breaking ball, you know, is is a typical breaking ball. So it'll be a matter of time before the Royals get to him. Alex Gordon four for eight after that two for 40 slump. Three hits yesterday including a double drove into. Ian Infante who will hit behind him. Are tied for the team lead with 44 driven in. The Royals lead the American League in stolen bases with 71. Kane does not go and Gordon swings and misses. It's a 1 1 count. It's a good location there. It's 
going to take Hellickson some time. Two, three, maybe even four starts before he can get some confidence going, get his arm speed back at the big league level. That is rope to right field. Kane will round second base, take third easily, and Gordon now with five hits in his last three games. Right down the middle. 79. It, that's his changeup. Straight as a string. It almost looked like a batting practice fastball. Well, he said that he would be a bit nervous. He had butterflies at Durham in his first start, and he figured he'd be a little nervous for this one, even though he's a veteran of three major league seasons. Here is Omar Infante. Fonte is four for six in his career and he's hit 328 with runners in scoring position. Got the whole right side open. He sees that smart hitter. Playing him dead pull. But he hits it in the air and Desmond Jennings should have this one. He does and the inning is over. The Royals threaten but do not score. And now they send Jason Vargas out. He beat the Rays at the K back in April and hopes to win game number nine tonight. Our key is starting pitcher for the Royals is Jason Vargas and Rexy has a chance to match last year's win total. Sure does. He's been exceptional, especially on the road. He enters tonight the top AL road warrior with an ERA of 152. That's fifth best. The opponents are only hitting 211. He's been really good. Solid job with his pitches. Changing speeds. Cut fastball, slider, curve, great changeup. And here's the Rays lineup Jennings Zobris then they go with Geyer hitting third Evan Longoria four and James Loney five Forsyth Rodriguez Hannigan and Kiermaier round out the Rays lineup. Strike one. The Rays against lefties are hitting 258 the Tanners. Now there are 53 home runs in their lineup tonight. However only 18 home runs off a of lefty. The record is 10 and 15 against left handed starters. Vargas just stays on his game and follows Salvi's lead just like James Shields did last night. The way he pitches and hits his spots should be good enough. But he's got to stay away from the long ball. Overall the Rays record not that impressive at 41 and 51 but they came off a very impressive nine and two road trip to Baltimore New York to play the Yankees and Detroit. In there for a strike a 2 2 count and they hit 281 with 17 home runs on that road trip.
and the Royals completely silenced them last night as a team. They only hit 133 against Shields in the pen. In there, strike three call perfectly located off speed pitch. Yep, change up his bread and butter. Now, against right handers, he's going to bust them in. We see him, he's, he's got to be able to open up the outside part of the plate. And how you do that is pitch guys in. But he snuck that one in there on the outside part very nicely. Salvador Perez had a couple of pickoffs so far this year, but he'll throw to every base. He's very solid. I love the energy he showed. Last night, catching James Shields, he's a he's a breath of fresh air, and it's no secret anymore. It's always interesting talking to the opponents about certain Kansas City Royals players. Salvador Perez has opened up a lot of eyes. This kid right here, Chris Archer, was talking with him before the game. He just raved about Salvador without putting any of his catchers down he said man it sure would be fun to throw with uh, to a guy with that kind of energy that kind of passion he's talking about him right now with Jake Odorizzi Jake had an opportunity to throw to Salvador a couple of years ago when he was part of the Royals organization before the trade to get Shields and Davis from the Rays believe me baseball world is talking about the Kansas City Royals and the three all-stars for sure. Continue to play their game and get some consistency in the three areas that Ned has been seeing so far with this ball club, and we're going to find a lot more wins than losses. Zobrist has been swinging a hot bat, ten hits his last four games to raise his average to 268. He was one of many hot bats on that road trip. A lot of people thinking David Price will be dealt from Tampa Bay to acquire. A lot of great minor league talent and if they do that Chris Archer would be their next star starting pitcher over the head and Fonte has it and he's able to get Sobras at first base a great stretch by Eric Hosmer at 6 4 he had to stand on his tiptoe stretch for that one yeah, Vargas he doesn't need to try to catch anything that he can't get to that's for sure because with the range on the infield their glove work the hand work they can take care of it Hosmer is a dream to throw to if especially if you're on the left side of the infield you don't have to worry you just get that ball and get it over there his, his hands are magical extremely soft you don't have to worry about overthrowing him because he can get to him you know, it, he gives you a great deal of confidence. I was talking to Alcides Escobar the other day about Hosmer, and he goes, I don't even think. I just throw. He gets the high ones because he's 6'4". He gets the low ones because he has such soft hands and likely will win his second gold glove. Royals had three last year in Perez, Hosmer, and Alex Gordon. And they have defended well. They're seventh in the American League in fielding percentage with 49 errors and about a third of them by their pitchers. Good off speed again. And Rex, he's not only getting that outside corner from Jeff Nelson. So he's going there. And look at this fade. Yeah, and it's the location. Last inning, Hellickson threw a few, and they were up, and they got hit. It's all about locating. Now this young man, Brennan Geyer, he's new in the league. Came over in, in the, from the Chicago Cubs. He's a speed guy. Got a little bit of power. He's very aggressive. To play all three outfield positions. Like a starting point. Escobar can't make the play. He knew he'd have to stay on his feet because Geyer runs so well. Just gets scooped by him and a two out base hit by Geyer. Hey fans, it's time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag KC fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by ATT.
Now Longoria, their most dangerous hitter in the lineup. 173 career home runs, 11 this year. Strike one. Longo also hits lefties better than any other Ray, a 330 average. Three homers against Southpaws. He's, he's six for 20 with one homer off of Vargas. Zobris has good numbers against lefties as well, but they feel Longoria will give them the most power. And of the 14 home runs given up by Vargas this year, 13 have been hit by right handed hitters. It's been off the changeup mainly. Vargas has only allowed two runs in the first inning this year in 18 starts. And those both were solo homers. So he's been really good in the first, usually. To third, Mustakas goes the short way. They get the force, and we are through one inning of play here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Nothing, nothing score. AT&T U-verse Rewind June 13th last year. Hellickson against the Royals. He gave up eight runs in the sixth inning alone. That was one of three starts he had against Kansas City and really beaten up. 17 earned runs and 13 in the third. Elliot Johnson hit a grand slam and drank some barbecue sauce. Yeah, that was when the barbecue sauce was flowing freely last year. But we've seen... The Royals offense do that this year. You put a bunch of hits together in an inning, they can score a bunch. And you remember that snow out the Royals had on May 1st with the Rays last year? Yes. The Rays had to come back and play one game, and Hellickson was blown up again. He got the start. An 11 4 8 ERA last year in three starts. And uh, they came back for one game and got blown out by Kansas City again. He lasted two and two thirds. It's easy to see why. He is not overpowering and he is straight. This is Moose's kind of hitter here. Or pitcher. He was also not pitching healthy. He told you he had the pain that revealed itself in June. And he continued to pitch. He made a team high 32 starts last year in ERA over five. And Really feels so much better than last season. Moose getting into much better counts. 
he's a different player. I know his numbers may not be what some people would like to see, especially his batting average, but he's a different player. Do you notice how he runs 90 feet now? He hustles down the line. He's 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 understanding what being a big leaguer is all about. He's growing up. And that little stint in the minors helped him. It didn't hurt him. It helped him. Gave him a little perspective. And he's he's got some skills to survive in this league and be be a good player. He's, I think he's got a chance for a gold glove someday. And and he's gonna hit for power. He's got a, a natural home run swing. He'll start getting that base hits to the opposite field. He'll be in business. In the air, right center field. Here, Meyer pulls away and allows Jennings to make the catch. So that is four fly ball outs from Helix in early in this game. It is not easy catching a fly ball here in this ballpark with that circus tent on top. It's it's kind of colored in gray. It's it's the ball can get lost up there. Really got to focus on catching it. It's hard to take your eye off the ball and run to a spot because you'll you'll lose it. Now Billy Butler has had tremendous success against Hellickson. Billy nine for 14 against the Rays right hander. We hope he keeps that going. He's really been in a bit of a slide the last couple of weeks. No RBIs his last eight games. As we said earlier, he has not hit seventh in the lineup since 2008, but back to back games in that seventh spot. As he has been searching to find some kind of comfort in his swing. You could see Hannigan motioning, I want it in the dirt. He did on an 0 2 count, and Billy took it. Tampa Bay has won 17 of their last 26 ball games, averaging almost five runs per game in that span. They were 18 games under in early June, but playing much better baseball last month. Fast ball up. To right field. That's a base hit. So Billy now 10 for 15 off Hellickson. Kiermaier looks like he is a little more under control tonight, the right fielder. He overran a ball, overthrew cutoff men last night a couple of times, cost his team a couple of runs. But this ball here slicing down the line. He slowed himself down and he caught the ball before it got under him. It's hard for some players that are wired, you know, they're high wired, they're very intense, they have speed to slow the game down. It sounds like that comes from personal experience. It does, but I'm trying to keep me out of it. <laughs> players, some players, they need a little bit of seasoning. Maybe you know, just take some reps. Maybe you play 50, 60, 70 games in a row. You can kind of get that out of your system. But they like the, the kid out in right field, Kiermaier. Here is Ibanez. He is 0 for his last 11. Ball one strike and Rex I know you don't like to talk about yourself but that is a good point. How long did you play in the big leagues before you realize I've got to calm myself down. Was it going over to Japan five years. It took me five years. I was a part time player so it was a little bit different. And, and some guys. Miss that. Good swing. He has recorded five outs and all five. Our flyouts and four have been caught by the center fielder Jennings. Well, here is Escobar has a couple of home runs, but he already has e equaled the number of extra base hits he had last year with 28. 
And our Toyota League leader shows he's one of the leaders in the doubles category with his teammate Alex Gordon, each with 24. Of course, the Royals in that ballpark at the K, they get a lot of doubles. And there is Eski and Gordon. The leader is Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers, 32 doubles. Detroit's another big ballpark, Comerica. Big center field area. That's your answer for production. You score runs a lot of different ways. Home runs are the most glamorous. They get the most attention. But the Royals, they're not a power hitting team per se, but they do hit the gaps and they run. And they are able to gen generate enough run support for their great pitching. Easy formula. Escobar one for four last night. That's to left another fly ball. And it's taken care of by Brandon Geyer. Six outs all fly outs. First time through. They'll get. Question of the day, what recent development is the most encouraging for the Royals entering the All-Star break? Is it Kane's move to the leadoff spot, Hosmer's hitting streak, Moose's power surge, or James Shields' return to form? Text ABC or D to 432-432. Yeah. Well, this is an opinion here, Fizz. You have one? You know what what I saw last night really was encouraging. I thought James Shields looked outstanding. Everything was down and as you indicated when he missed he missed down. That's right. Uh, my opinion is the same. I'm going to go with James. I think that's impressive for the ball club. All of them are good though. It's nice yeah. to see all the success that they're having. But the mound. It's 90% of the game. And wow he was impressive. We'll be talking to James later tonight, so you want to hear that. Fouled off. Tonight, Fizz, we, we're going to get him next half inning. Folks, stay tuned. James Loney leads the team in RBIs with 43. 30 year old veteran out of Houston, Texas. Played with the Dodgers, Red Sox. When he came to Tampa, he really had a very strong season and enjoyed the clubhouse atmosphere with 299 last year with 13 home runs. Mark Teixeira is back and healthy for the New York Yankees, and a lot of people believe that Teixeira, Loney, Hosmer are the favorites to win the gold this year at first base. Vargas handles this one. Loney is out, and that's similar to the first time he came up last night when 
He hit a ball to the third base side and Shields tried to grab it, bobbled it, and Loney was safe at first base. Well, fans, on July 27th, it's Mother Sunday at the K, and as part of this special ticket package, you'll receive a limited edition Royals cap and a commemorative framed photo. You can only receive these items if you purchase the Mother Son Day package. So visit royals.com slash family now to learn how. Yeah, we had father-daughter day. We can take mm -hmm. care of the moms with their boys. There you go. Logan Forsythe, the batter, very strong road trip. 361 average on that trip and all three of the home runs he's hit this year came on that nine and two trip to Baltimore New York and Detroit guy they picked up in the offseason from San Diego 268 with two homers off of lefties that was three Kane will take care of this one and Rex it was very interesting I was watching Logan take early batting practice today and Joe Madden has them take batting practice early BP with heavier bats and smaller baseballs. Why? Yeah, well, the heavier bats are going to train your muscles for a, a little bit slower speed, and then when you grab the light, lighter bats, in theory, you're going to be quicker. However, you're working on your hands. So You've you got to use your hands to, to use a heavy bat, so it, it, it's more of a hands drill. And then the smaller the ball, obviously, it trains your eye to hit a smaller object, and then when the, the ball comes and it's a little bigger, it, it looks bigger. These are all uh, ways that you can train your hands and eyes, which is extremely important for hitters. Forsyth, Rodriguez, are hammering balls deep to center field, and here is Sean. This is a guy with very good power. Eight home runs this year, four against lefties, four against righties. Very versatile player. He aging for the third time this year. He, I talked to him before the game. And I didn't think he was a fan of DH, and he loves to play. He likes to play out in the field. Misses this one to left field for a hit. Gordon gets to it quickly, but then bobbles it and realizes he has no chance now to get Rodriguez at second base. He waited on the curveball. It was out over the plate. Alex, he pursues that ball down the line, the best in the league for sure. And if he can't get to it, he concedes the double. I don't know how many moments we've seen him this year, Rex, whether it's a head first slide or playing the ball off the wall or taking a swing where he hits the ball out of the park where he's blowing a bubble during a dramatic moment. <laughs> he's, he's got extreme skills, Fizz. <laughs> I, I can't explain that one for you. He was going for that ball, and when he knocked it down, big bubble coming out. Barely missing low. Yep, perfect spot. You'll see him go in there with that fastball. Salvi setting up in there and try to get that ball in to get the change up away. Ryan Hannigan 0 for 3 last night and 0 for his last 12. He and Jose Molina usually share that catching role. Vargas has struck out one. It was Desmond Jennings on the outside corner. Circle change where that index finger is all coiled up into a little ball. He doesn't even realize he's doing it. You don't see too many pitchers that, that coil that index finger. Most of them just circle it. They call that a circle change. He had him reaching for it and he pulls it foul. Past the Royals bullpen. Hannigan has done a good job with runners in scoring position. Three of his four home runs have been with guys in that situation.
Rodriguez with a two out double. Hitters watch the pitcher's glove. Vargas, he has the same position that he holds his glove all the time. So he holds it like that out. So hitters can't pick up that he's going to his changeup grip. Oh, oh man. man, he has missed twice right there. Perfect spot. That's right where he wants to stay. He's not going to get frustrated. Very good mound presence. Salvi can't make that look any better. Just wasn't given. Veteran Jeff Nelson, the crew chief, calling balls and strikes. And then he goes off speed, but it fades away. Three and two. Hannigan was Cincinnati for so many seasons. Many of them down in the minor leagues and finally made it because of his defense up to the big leagues and now hitting enough. Share that role. He's got to be looking for the fastball. Hennigan. And he struck him out on the off speed at 81 miles an hour. Here we go. Perfect spot. Change the speeds on him. And James Shields is coming up when we come back. We'll talk with big game James when we come back. Kansas City Honda dealers bring you the MTP of the game the most trusted player brought to you by the most trusted brand Honda. This was last year James Shields coming back to the trop but he did not start in that four game series and so many of the fans holding signs up saying you'll always be in my heart James and he certainly has been. He was one of the key members of the Rays who brought the Ray way to Tampa Bay when they came from last place to first place to make the World Series and James still has the only win for the Rays in the World Series. Well he was sensational last night and now he joins us down near the dugout and James the foundation was set great storyline. I know your friends are, are behind you causing problems <laughs> but we needed an author to write the script and you did that beautifully last night. That had to be one of your favorite moments in your career. Yeah no doubt about it. I mean when you're coming back to uh, your old stomping grounds uh, you always want to go ahead and beat the team up that, uh, that traded you. But uh, you know I mean uh, we had a lot of fun last night. It was good memories last night on the mound but uh, when it came down to it we wanted to get that dub. How about Salvador Perez? He was a little more animated with you last night, James. Uh, had, you know, three or four visits to the mound. How important is it to throw to an energetic guy like Salvi? You know, I'll tell you what, man. It's uh, last night was great. We were on the same page the whole entire game. And, uh, you know, when, when there were some calls that, uh, that I didn't want, he, he, he wanted another call. He came out to the mound, and we, we discussed it. So, you know, to be able to have that trust uh, in the catcher and uh, have a good relationship right there, uh, you know, helped out yesterday in some key situations. 
And James we were t talking to your former manager Joe Madden who absolutely loves you. I'm not sure if he was able to talk to you but he said where did James get that curveball his curveball <laughs> was outstanding. I wanted him to throw it more when he was here. Yeah man when I was over there they were begging me to throw that thing man. It's uh, you know we had we had a few meetings uh, about my curveball over there. You know but um, you know the last couple of games I've been feeling really good about the curveball and you know I've been really working hard all season long on it and staying consistent with it and uh, last night it was working pretty well. James you do an excellent job on the field and, and also off and, and the thing I like most one of the things is, is the mentoring that goes on. Who mentored you and who are you mentoring now? You know the, the biggest person in my career was my cousin Aaron Rowan. Um, you know this guy I worked out with him for about five years out in Vegas and uh, you know he taught me the way the way how to how to do things and, and the work ethic and I mean this guy was probably one of the hardest workers I've ever I've ever met in my life. I mean he's just a beast in the gym and uh, you know just just the way to way to go about playing the game the right way and uh, you know hopefully I, uh, I do that and, and um, you know I try, I try to respect that in, in the game and uh, you know go from there. Did it also help being the youngest of three brothers? <laughs> it did. It did. It definitely did. It, it, it definitely humble, humble, uh, humble pied me, man. <laughs> That's right. Everybody gets a piece of humble pie. That's now right. some get the whole pie, though, James. <laughs> and, and and tell you tell the the audience. What that's like when you're going through that downtime as a player and how you get out of it. Yeah, man. I mean, you just got to stay consistent. I mean, uh, you know, the best attribute as a baseball player, as an athlete, is amnesia, man. I mean, uh, amnesia is my best friend. So, you know, every time you have a bad outing, you know, you got to try to forget about it and move on and uh, and stay consistent with uh, with your, your work ethic and your workouts and bullpen sessions, all that good stuff. So hopefully it uh it all evens out. How about your body language when you go in the clubhouse when things aren't going so good? Do you are you mindful of that the way you carry yourself? I mean, you try to be. You know, you just you just try to be yourself, really. I mean, whoever you are, just be you. That's all I say. <laughs> How about Duffy and Ventura, two young guys that obviously are learning from the veteran uh, other veteran pitchers on the team. You Guthrie and Vargas. Do they ask you questions? Yeah, I mean, uh, all the time, you know. I mean, we're constantly talking to each other, you know. I, I mean, even though we've been in the league for, for quite a while and, uh, you know, we're always learning. Um, I remember Andy Pettit said one day to me that you never stop learning until uh, till you, till you retire. So, um, you know, we're always talking to each other, learning about each other, and uh, really helping each other out, so it's good. Lorenzo Kane works the walk. And, James, I understand tomorrow you're going to meet a dog that is named after you. Can you tell me that story? Yeah, man. I just found out, actually. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lady that, that named her dog, uh, and it happened to be an English Labrador, which I have two of those. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, named her, uh, named her dog Big Game James. So, um, <laughs> you know, I guess they put, put the dog in some shows, and uh, he's number one in the country, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> number one in the country. Best, uh, best, best in show. Big game, James. So we're gonna we're gonna meet the dog tomorrow, and I guess they got a certificate for me. Um, you know, and uh, you know I can't wait to meet the dog. I'm a big dog lover, so we'll see how that, that dog dog is. James, you were not only known for your leadership in the clubhouse with the race, but also in the community and for your efforts with foster kids. You and your wife. Um, received the raise recipient of the Roberto Clemente Award in 2009, 2010, and 2011. That's the most in club history. Why did you get involved with foster care here in this area and now bring it to Kansas City? You know, I think it's important. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people uh, kind of uh, underestimate the whole foster care programs, and, uh, you know, I think it's definitely a, a good way to uh, get it out there. Uh, me and my wife, we put together a little Big Game James Club. Uh, we had a suite out here. Brought together about 150 kids every year and, and uh, brought them out to games and, and had a put possibility of uh, finding a forever family. And, and that's what it's all about. I mean, these kids, you know, it's not their choice to not have a family. And uh, every kid, kid needs a family and, and a chance to uh, survive in life. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good deal. The kids are great. I mean, all the kids are outstanding. And uh, if you ever get a chance, I think they still have the club still going on here. And, and uh, hopefully you can uh, get, get a chance to get to know them. And very quickly, back in Kansas City, you and KCPNL have your big game James section, which provides 250 tickets, as we see Kane steal his third base in as many nights. But can you talk about that program? It provides 250 tickets to foster children and your family and families at five Royals games during 
last year and again this season. Yeah, I mean, it just gives them a chance to watch a baseball game and uh, come out and enjoy some of the things that they never get to have in their life. And, and what it's all about is just creating memories, you know. I mean, um, you know, growing up, you know, you, that's, all you, that's all you go back to is your memories of your childhood. And if you have good memories, you know, you might be able to, to go back on those, look back on them, and, uh, you know, have a lot of respect. And, and those some of those kids, man, I mean, they go through so much – turmoil in their life and and uh you know just to have some good memories in their in their life is great james when you throw the when you throw a baseball and i know you've seen it over the over your years your head really falls off hard <laughs> to the right side and it looks uh, it's a no-look pitch really yeah. I mean, you know Mon jeff montgomery hall of fame royals pitcher is telling us about you know, it's important that you keep your head on the target. <laughs> well, how, do you, how do you do it? I mean, you know, you, you throw and your head is, is looking into the opposition, opposition dugout. I don't know, man. It's something I've always done in my whole life, man. It's snap and go, baby. You just snap your head as hard as you can and uh, maybe you get some more movement out of it. You never know. <laughs> No, I mean, it's just something I've always done, man. I mean, um, you know, luckily uh, my delivery kind of takes care of, care of itself. I don't think my head really really matters too much. Um, obviously, if I'm violently uh, violently shaking it a little more than normal, I guess it'll affect me. But uh, just something I've always done, man. Well, sometimes it, it leaves the ball up in the zone. How do you adjust to that and keep it down? Like last night, everything was down. Well, I, I don't think it necessarily has anything to do with my head. It's more, more uh, you know, rushing to the plate, um, not being – you know, rhythmatic, not not have been in this good rhythm with my body and uh, being in sync. So I don't really think it has any. I think the head snap. If you look at it on the video, it's just kind of like one frame. You know, it's not really, <laughs> it's not really crazy. But uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it creates deception. You never know. Yeah, no, it does. It does from a hitter standpoint, no question about it. But thanks for explaining that to us, because you know <laughs> I could talk about it, but it's better coming from you. Yeah, you never know. Head snaps, head snaps create movement sometimes. <laughs> James, you have experience going from the depths of despair where the Rays were to success in the World Series. And I remember last year when the Royals were having their success, particularly after the All-Star break. And I remember you saying, hey, the, the three things that came together with the Rays are coming together with us. That's character, heart, and team baseball. Can you see that coming together again with your team? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, going into this season is completely different than last season. I mean, these guys have really bought into the process. And, and uh, you know, I mean, we have to realize it's a long season, 162 games, you know. And, uh, you know, we can't, we can't just put so much pressure on ourselves at the beginning of the year. I mean, we just got to keep winning series. That's it. You know, that's our main goal is winning series. And I think we've, we've done a pretty good job most for the most part of this year of, of that. And uh, we're right in the thick of things right now. So, um, you know, we've been playing really good baseball. Hopefully we can continue, stay consistent, um, you know, and win, win a bunch of ball games here. Salvador Perez is at the plate right now. You saw his major league debut. Can you go back and talk about that? Yeah, man, major league debut was here, I think, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, so, I mean, it, he was a... He's a young kid, man, with so much enthusiasm. I mean, we were watching the other side of the dugout, and we just couldn't believe how much, uh, you know, enthusiasm he had. I mean, he was into every pitch. I mean, I think he caught, like, four foul balls, which was amazing um, in itself, uh, you know. And then he had, a, I think, a hit or two in the game. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, he's he's a big boy, young kid, and, and uh, we knew he definitely had a lot of talent. Now that I'm on his team, I'm, I'm definitely glad he's back there, especially after seeing what I saw last night, throwing from his knees, throwing Zobi out from his knees, man. I mean, he's, he's a special player. You threw to a lot of different catchers with the Rays organization, but mainly one with the Royals. What is that like to have that consistency with one guy? Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice to have a consistent catcher back there. I mean, uh, you know, you're going to have to go through a lot of things throughout the season and, uh, you know, have a catcher, one catcher back there, knowing what you do every single five days and, uh, you know, being able to trust each other and, and that whole bit. I mean, it's great. Well, tell us about Hellickson. He was your former teammate, and he is confounding the Royals thus far in the first three. Yeah, I mean he's he's a competitor, man. He goes out there and uh, he's got he's got no emotion on the mound, and you know he, he competes, man. Uh, you know it's good to see him back. He had some surgery, I think his bone chip removal or something like that, and uh, you know it's always good to see him see him back. But hopefully we can beat him up a little bit. <laughs> well, Hellickson has. Allowed a walk, a stolen base in this inning, but he was able to get Eric Hosmer out, striking him out when Eric was trying to advance that runner to third. Hey, James, 
you know, having been in the clubhouse for many years with a lot of different teams, I experienced what goes on. What goes on here in Kansas City is pretty special. I mean, I haven't never been down there, but I've heard. Can you share with the audience uh, a little bit about after a win, maybe what you guys do? I'm going to tell you what, man. We celebrate every single win. Every single win we celebrate. I mean, like it's uh, like it's the World Series, man. I mean, we, we celebrate every win. I think we cherish every win. You know, we have something to play for every night. We have a, we have a player of the game after every game. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, every night we go out there, someone wants to be be the player of the game. I mean, someone wants to turn on a light. And, uh, you know, we, we like to we like to have fun at the end of the game so that next day everyone forgets about it. We move on and we try to win again. So every day everyone wants to be the player of the game. So it's nice. Well, Hellickson teasing the Royals and Salvi just fouls that one off to stay alive at two balls and two strikes. James, you know, to be a leader as a pitcher that's one thing to lead the staff but you to me are the first pitcher I've ever seen that can really lead a whole team <laughs> now, do you, you know all the guys all the position players have have bought in and, and how much pride do you have in that you know I don't think it's so much leading the whole team I just think it's uh, you know something that's contagious you know I feel like uh, you know there's a lot of leaders everyone's a leader in their own way you know I mean Gordo's a leader just by example I mean he de definitely doesn't uh, voice his opinion as much as I do but uh, you know I mean it's just kind of uh, everyone's a leader in their own way and everyone feeds off each other so um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily call the leader of the team by no means but uh, you know I like to do my part um, on this team and, and hopefully uh, you know everybody uh, does their part so that's what makes it makes good chemistry James right now Salvi's having a great at bat. He's putting, he's fouling a lot of pitches off. How frustrating for a pitcher is that when a guy's got an at bat going like this? Oh man, it's real frustrating. I mean, you're throwing the kitchen sink at a guy and it keeps fouling you off. It's almost like you don't even know what to throw anymore, you know what I mean? But you don't want to give in. So Salvi's doing a great job right now of that. Here's the 2 2 pitch, and Salvi takes it in three balls you know, and two strikes. I think it's the most important thing is he's, he's getting his pitch count up, man. I mean, we got to get into that bullpen, which is great. <laughs> 51 thus far. Uh, Lorenzo Kane had an eight pitch walk, which was good. James, you ever want to say, you know what, this guy's fouling off too many pitches, I'm just going to drill him? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of times where I want to feel like that for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I remember in that club in, in that dugout when pitcher would come and go, uh, you know, he's just drilling next time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would, I would have rather drilled him on the first pitch rather than the 13th pitch. <laughs> That's for sure. Stan Williams back in the 1960s was a reliever for the Los Angeles Dodgers, and he had it in his contract. That he would be fined if he walked so many batters. So anytime he got to a 3 0 count, he would just drill the guy <laughs> and it didn't affect his contract. Uh, maybe I need to put that in my next contract. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, man. Uh, James, you got a couple of hits this year. You like swinging the bat. Yeah, man. I'm, actually, I'm trying to win ball games. I'm trying to win ball games, man. I you know, I got you were a terrific take... hitting third baseman in uh, the Valley. But the, hey, I take uh, I take uh, take pride in my hitting, man. You, you know, when you're out there, you got to win the ball games no matter what. Danny Duffy said you take gangster hats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like to play a little home run derby during yeah. BP. That's that, for sure. That was a new term. <laughs> I never heard that term before. Yeah, gangster hack. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that one. Being swinging for the downs. <laughs> you had that long duel. I remember in San Diego, like 10, 11 pitches. Yeah. Salvi swings and misses at the off speed and strikes out. Well, James, did you know that there's only been one other American League pitcher who struck out 10 or more and did not allow a run in his first road start against his old team. That other guy was Nolan Ryan who oh, wow. did it in 1989 <laughs> and that was years removed after he pitched for the Astros was with the Rangers and finally pitched against the Angels and uh, until last night no other pitcher had done that. I bet you he probably threw nine though. <laughs> <laughs> he did. It was a three hit complete game yeah, shutout with I 12 strikeouts. That. I figured as much. I figured as much. <laughs> he had a few. He had a few complete games under his belt. Well here is Alex Gordon. And it looks like James that he's beginning to get his swing back. Yeah man Gordo man, this guy's Mr. Consistent man. He just uh, he's out there every day uh, working. As hard as anybody in the game, so um, yeah, he's looking real good right now with his swing, and uh, it's good to see him see him swinging it. Royals trying to take the early lead.
James, what great feeling is it for, for you and, and the starters to have a lead after the seventh inning and then Davis and Holland, <laughs> you know, come in? They're not perfect. You know, somebody's going to touch them up eventually, yeah. but, but that's got to make you feel really confident. You know, I'll tell you what, I've been very fortunate to have uh, tremendous eighth and ninth inning guys in my career, and uh, Wade Davis and, and Holland are definitely uh, up there with the best of them. You know, you, you know, as a starter, you know that if you get to the seventh inning with a lead, you know you're going to have a good shot to win in that ball game. And uh, you know, our bullpen's been just phenomenal this year. I mean, last year we were we were really really good, and uh, this year we're, we're just as equal. So um, you know, have those guys in the back end of the bullpen definitely give the starter comp confidence. Uh, you know, right right out the gates, right going into the game. I remember at that first press conference. You and Wade Davis, and you did most of the talking, and you called Wade the silent assassin. That's right, baby. <laughs> the silent assassin. He has some kind of fastball. Yeah, he's uh, he's got some electric stuff, man. And Hellickson trying to get Gordon at, to go for that breaking ball on the outside. He has thrown 57 pitches now, not yet through three innings. If they don't score a run here, at least they got his pitch count up. Yeah, man, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, people don't understand. That's a that's a big part of the game. Getting the, getting the pitch count up by a starter and you know making throw a lot of pitches and getting to that bullpen. Gordon to center field, not deep enough. Jennings with the catch. James, thanks very much and congratulations. A tremendous performance last night and a great memory in your memory book for the future. Awesome, guys. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate it. Enjoyed your business, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, bud. Join us for Buck Night and Summer Fireworks this Friday when the Tigers come to town. Select items are just $1 at the concession stand, so you can stock up on hot dogs, peanuts, and small Pepsi products. Then stay after the game for a great fireworks show courtesy of hy V and Pepsi. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery with you at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. Jeremy Hellickson making his first start of the year wiggling out of jam after jam and Jason Vargas jams Kiermaier who pops it up and Vargas takes care of it. Well, Vargas first time through the order now will face Desmond Jennings for the second time struck him out looking. Jason has allowed two hits. Hellickson has allowed three and a walk.
Jennings out of Birmingham, Alabama. He has a cousin who plays for the Cincinnati Bengals, Andre Smith, who is an offensive lineman. And that is a very different family when you've got one guy who's 6'6, 330 pounds, and another one who is 5 feet 11 and 190. Jennings was a good football player. Mm -hmm. Very good wide receiver. There is a walk to Jennings with one out. That's one of the things that Joe Madden likes about Desmond this year. He's been more patient. That is his 39th walk this season. And that's why they have him in that leadoff role as Ben Zobris comes in. And he's got the most stolen bases on the team, does Jennings. He's got 12, been caught six times. Vargas had a shutout last time he faced the Rays until the ninth inning when Ben Zobris led off with a home run. But he would win that game. He is 4 and 4 with a 3 1 ERA and 10 starts against the Rays. Pitched very well at the Trop. 2.52 ERA and wins in his last two starts, including last August 29th. And he again shut out the Rays for seven innings. Zobras to right field, racing over is Ibanez, who will make the catch, twirl and fire to first, and Hosmer with a nice pick, but getting back just in time is Jennings. Two out. That was a nice play by Ibanez. He read it well. Playing the corner outfields can be tricky. The ball's going to be slicing. See how it's slicing towards the line, but Ibanez got there, spun and fired a one hopper, almost doubled him up. Time to pay off our sprint family, and we asked that question about going towards the All Star break. The guys that we were excited about, thought were encouraging situations for the second half and Kansas City's success. As Brandon Geyer comes up, Kane's leadoff success 32%, but a lot of fans agreed with us, Rex, that Shields, the way he looked last night after five six weeks of having a, a rough time. They sure like to count on that every, every fifth day. Well, he looked as Jeff Montgomery said like a different pitcher. Okay, Zobras had a really nice swing good approach. He wasn't trying to pull that change up. He shot that ball down the line and Ibanez saved a run. Geyer out of Herndon Virginia. He played his college baseball with Ryan Zimmerman. At Virginia. Single his last time up just by Escobar at short. Got him to pop up. Kane there. And Lorenzo makes the catch. And Vargas with three shutout innings.
fans, you can get yourself a Charlie Hustle brand T-shirt this Friday when the Royals take on the Tigers. For a limited time only, fans can purchase a special ticket package that includes a ticket to the game and a Royals Charlie Hustle T-shirt. You can only get this one-of-a-kind shirt by purchasing the Charlie Hustle ticket package. So go to Royals.com slash Charlie Hustle now to learn more. Great to see the Kansas City Royals fans on the road. It's always good to see them. They're excited. A lot of them staying at the team hotel. Can't wait to get home. We begin a four game series on Thursday with first, first place Detroit. There's a fastball on the inside corner to Infante. He flied out to center field with runners on first and third back in the first. Royals have had Hellickson on the ropes about every single inning, but he's been able to wiggle out of it. Longoria. One out. Let's go to Joel. Talk so much about the struggles this year at third base, but over the last month, things have been a lot better. Danny Valencia since June 8th slugging 636. Mike Moustak is slugging 533. And how about this? Major League Baseball leaders as a team at third base since June 8th, the last month, the Royals with an OPS on base plus slugging of 930. That is the second best in the major leagues. And so while you still look up and you see Mike Moustak is chasing 200, the slugging has been a lot better. He's really been on a roll over the last month getting on base and slugging. And when Valencia has been in there against lefties, his numbers have been even better. That right there will be the true definition of a very good platoon. It did not work early in the season with Moustakis' struggles, but both guys right now getting the job done at a power position. And Valencia likely will get that start on Thursday when the Royals open that four-game set against the Tigers with Drew Smiley getting the start. Opposite Jeremy Guthrie. Moose didn't like the call from the home plate umpire Nelson on that breaking ball that caught the outside. Even though this is his first start of the year, Joe Madden said he would not respect restrict Jeremy. He had a full month down in the minor leagues to rehab to get ready for the start and he said he was ready and capable of going 100 to 110 pitches. So far he's been just effective enough. We're getting a lot of pop ups. Another one to right field. Two outs. The Royals only have three hits all of them singles and one by Billy Butler. Eight flyouts. First six outs were all flyouts and then he finally got a couple of strikeouts and fly out by Gordon to end the third a ground out by Infante to start the fourth and now uh, fly ball to right by Moustakis. There's a base hit back up the middle for Butler. So he is two for two, and the Royals have had base runners in all four innings. Sliced one down the right field line, his first hit, and this one is right up the middle. The one thing that we've seen from Jeremy Hellickson, Rex. He hasn't made many mistakes over the middle of the plate. A lot of the mistakes are either just off the plate. He's walked one. That was to Kane to lead off the third. It's a matter of time. They'll get him. Ibanez going through that, that shift there. That's that's a straight across shift. Look how deep Forsyth is in right field. 
right down the middle. Ibanez had a good pitch to hit and drove it to center field about 390 feet from home plate. But caught by Jennings in center. Raul, Raul has only been with the club a little more than a week, but he just seems to be a player magnet when the guys come out to stretch. He's sitting there, and one day you'll have all of the Latin players around him talking, and then another day you'll have a lot of the American players around him. He is easy to talk to, and one thing Mike Moustakis said was that he'll come to us and say, what did you see that I could be doing better? What did you see from this pitcher? Talking the game is extremely important. He took a shot to left field there. His first base hit to as a Royal as a return to the Royals was to left left field in Minnesota. He also homered in that twin series. Alexson's going to first base and they record the out and that will do it for the Royals in the fourth. Brought to you by Panera, coming soon to College and King in Overland Park. And by your Midwest Ford dealer. Visit us at your MidwestFordDealers.com. We come to you from Tropicana Field. And Royals fans, are you looking to come out to the cave for the second half of the season? Well, make sure to check out the new Salvi All-Star Pick'em Plan, where you have the option to pick any 10 Royals games starting as low as $13 a ticket. Plus, will include an autographed Salvador Perez hat for every pair purchased. Make your own Salvi All-Star pick and plan at Royals.com slash Salvi or by calling 816-504-4040. Option two. Well, option one on the mound, and that is Jason Vargas, and he will face the middle of the order. That means the dangerous Longoria, then Loney and Forsythe. Six of Vargas's nine outs so far have all been on the changeup. That's been his pitch. And it's the same tonight. It's working for him. Ned Yost was saying before the game that Jason, an absolute master at using the fastball to the outside corner of the plate, especially to right handers, and then coming back inside like he did there. And he got Longo to pop up. Perez wants it. Perez takes it. 
And Moose says, I'll take it now. You like for your third baseman to take that, but Moose saw that Salvi had his feet underneath him. No need to run him off. He uses two hands there. That's that's fundamentally correct. He said other, the ball pops out. He had the other hand right there to close the pocket. Here is James Loney. Breaking ball misses. Rex, you were talking about his success with the changeup tonight. If he's able to get that change up on the outside corner, particularly to a right handed batter, I mean, it must drive you crazy when it comes inside to your kitchen at 88. Yeah, he, he's he's got to be able to pitch inside effectively with his fastball and it backs the hitters off. It gets in the back of their mind and then he goes the change up away. It's just a pattern that lefties have used against righties for years. If you have a special change up, you've got to be able to have that other fastball to keep him off of it. Who were the toughest left handers you had to face? Sid Fernandez wasn't easy. Terry Mulholland. Frank Viola. John Tudor had the best change up I saw. Fernando I was in his no hitter. Kenny Rogers perfect game. He was he was tough in his prime. Randy Johnson was the toughest of them all. Uh, because he was just, just too so hard. But the change ups are a special pitch to a lefty. I mean, to a right handed batter. It, it, it gets you thinking. So about halfway through my career I just started bellying up on the plate and, and look for change ups up and try to hit him out of the park. But it just takes time and you mentioned earlier about how do you slow the game down if you're a position player and you're, you're really a, a hyper guy and stuff. It just comes with reps. It, it comes with playing every day. You you got to You got to just. Get grounded. You got to be able to catch your breath and realize that I got to stay under control. And I got to be able to think and not just let my body react. It takes time. Yeah, Dale Swayman and I, the hitting instructor, were having a conversation about that. He said, what if you scrapped an EKG to a rookie as compared to a veteran and check their heart rate when they got two strikes on them? Yeah, yeah it, it's amazing how, how it is. It just comes with experience. Vargas with a 3-2 count to Loney. Lace to right field, the base hit. And Loney is on first with one out. Both teams have had base runners in all four innings. In her half, he was looking there. Not overpowering, 88. Hitters can get around on that. Were there certain left handers out there that if they yell at you change up you still would have a tough time reading it coming out of their hand is there's not too many pitchers out there that will tell you what's coming. No I know how, that how? but I'm saying but didn't you tell me John Tudor you said his change up just you, you know I, he could throw it ten times in a you, row you knew it was coming but finally I couldn't hit it so I could bunt it it's much easier to bunt it so with two strikes why not just square around everybody's back just put the ball down and Get on base. However, John Tudor didn't like that. He was he, <laughs> he, he called me some unkind words, uh, you know, in, in the heat of battle. But I'm just trying to get on base and win for my team. But you got to figure out what works for you. You're, you're competing. You're competing each pitch. You're trying to beat the guy. And you got to concentrate. It's not an easy game. Forsyth flied out to center field first time up. His brother Blake is a catcher in the New York Mets system. Loney doesn't run that much, but he is two for two stealing bases this year. 
Did he go? He did not. And then now it is a 3 1 count. But Vargas really teasing the batters in the low portion of that strike zone. Yeah, and, and that's where he's going to get the ground ball double play. Challenged him, got him to pop up. Hosmer. That was a tough play and it was a tough read for Eric. Well, yeah. Remember, I told you, you when you look down to see where you are and then you look back up again, you can't find it. That's exactly what happened to Eric there. He had plenty of room, but see, he looked down to see where he was and then he lost it. He says, oh, he looked down there again twice. It's, it's arena baseball. So is the music. <laughs> it's constant. Yeah, it's pretty noisy in here. The sound bounces off the walls and all that. At least there's no birds so far that we've seen tonight. No, no pigeons. They interrupted that first inning last night. So a full count to Logan Forsyth. I doubt he'll run him. Because As Jason strikes him out at, with an 89 mile an hour fastball perfectly located. Salvador barely had to move his glove. And the reason he didn't steal Loney is because it would have been strike him out, throw him out. Yeah, and there are days when they had Carl Crawford and BJ Upton, they used to run like crazy. They were usually in the upper division with stolen bases, but this year, third from the bottom with only 32, 39 fewer than the Royals. And now Rodriguez and he takes a big hack at a first pitch. But the Rays are going to try to change that as far as the steals go. They got a couple of guys they like in, in uh, Kevin Kiermeyer. And Brandon Geyer. These are two guys that have speed and they play outfield. They can play any any outfield positions. And with Will Myers out, they're getting a chance to get a look at these guys. And, and those are their future base stealers that they're trying to bring back in. Right there at 89. So advantage Vargas 0 and 2 to Rodriguez, who does strike out a lot. He's only walked six times and struck out 37. He doubled his last time up. It was only Rodriguez's third hit against the Royals left hander in 20 career at bats. Last year the Rays won 92 games made it to the playoffs. Finished second in the East to the Boston Red Sox. You're an everyday player like Rodriguez and you DH. The hardest thing is trying to find out what to do in between at bats. You'll sit there and watch a, a half an inning and then you'll go down, take some swings, come back. Depends on how long the innings are, but those can be really taxing for you. And it can be a, a, a tough position for a guy like Rodriguez who's used to playing on the field defensively. It can be mentally exhausting. To Escobar gets it to second base for the force. We head to the fifth inning of play. Jason Vargas has shut out the Rays, but Helixson.
game break, and Rajay Davis with the RBI going to knock in a run. And this in the fourth inning, 7-5. to five. The Dodgers were up 5 nothing, scoring five off of Verlander in the first. But then L.A. gives up seven back, so we'll keep our eye on that. Mike Jersley had a lot of people coming up to him around the batting cage today saying hi and even giving him a hard time, and there's a reason for that. Between both of these teams, there are 20 players in uniform that have suited up for Mike Jersley at AAA Omaha over the years, from the David DeJesus of the world to more recently Jake Odorizzi and Will Myers, Juan Carlos Oviedo, then Leo Nunez. He played for him. Same for Joel Peralta and many, many Royals, Billy Butler, Alex Gordon, and on and on. So a very popular man around the league and here at this stadium. Hud, I did a little research for you, by the way. You did. There you see Will Myers. What'd well, you, I'll ask you, what lefty did you have the most homers against? Jamie Moyer. Three. Okay. Okay. What else? Most hits. Wilson Alvarez. Oh, man, you've been digging into these notes. 11, 579 batting average against the lefty Alvarez. Okay. And who'd you strike out the most against? Oh, uh, Randy Johnson. Seven of them, but you also had a 389 batting average. So That's right. And one curtsy. <laughs> <laughs> and one curtsy. I got him in my in my one-chapter book, though. I have a chapter. A lot of hitters. Most one of, more chapter than us. Well, most, most hitters have a book. I just had a chapter. Like a sentence, but it was fun, Joel. I'll tell you, it, being a platoon player wasn't bad. It helped me get my time in, and, and I didn't have to play every single day. And I didn't wear down. But uh, it, it's interesting facing a guy like Vargas. It can be a, a cat and mouse game. You got to really be patient against him, and he's been so successful because of the exceptional changeup and the ability to pitch inside. That's what we're witnessing. Hellickson has shown better movement on his pitches as this game has progressed earlier. He was able to get a lot of fly ball outs on fastballs that were straight. Now more movement with the two seamer. Looks like he's he's settling in. Yeah, he's he's been able to execute when he's got in trouble. That's a sign of a, of a pretty good pitcher. It's a curve. Stayed in. He hung two curves and one was drilled by Eric Hosmer foul in the first inning. Two two count now to Escobar who was out on a fly ball to left field. Esky has always hit well against these Rays came in with a 357 batting average against Tampa Bay pitching including 333 at the trop. Very deserving of going to next week's all star game but keep working at it and hope to get there next year when Jeter's not around. Nelson, the home plate umpire, didn't give Hellickson that inside pitch either. So that's good. He's not giving it to Vargas or Hellickson. The Royals have had their leadoff guy on twice, but unable to get him around. Now Eski will pop it up into shallow center field. Jennings is there for the first out. Fans, you can vote for the Royals Player of the Month at rallyhouse.com slash Royals and be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. And Lorenzo Cain, certainly one of the candidates for just about every single month. He continued his hit streak in this month to five straight games with a base at his first time up and then walked and stole second base. Well, what was impressive about the walk was he milked eight pitches, fouled off a bunch of them. Seen some pitches from Helix. Lorenzo had a lot of family and friends come down from the Jacksonville area. His mom is here today. And he chases a breaking ball. He was born in Valdosta, Georgia, but raised across the Florida state line in Madison County. And many of you have heard this story. His father passed away when Lorenzo was only four years old. So his mom, Patricia, raised Kane and his brother. 
and they were pretty much latchkey kids where they'd come home from school and they were not enrolled in any kind of little league programs or soccer or football and Lorenzo said it was pretty much clean up the house do your homework and get ready and he did not play baseball organized baseball until his sophomore year in high school and then obviously things took off and a lot of his high school teammates are here at this game tonight. Great story. If you're an athlete, you can do that. You can pick it up. Well, the story is at his high school workout, he hit two over the wall, and his coach told the scout from Milwaukee that he was very coachable and uh, Sponge wanted to learn, and Milwaukee drafted him in the 17th round. Kane said, I was so raw at baseball, I didn't even know what the draft meant. Somebody called from Milwaukee and I wasn't home and they said, hey, you got drafted in the 17th round. So I got to join the army. <laughs> Innocence is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Now look at it. It's worked hard. Premier player. Boy, he is trying to tease the Royals to chase bad pitches. He has struck out two Hosmer and Perez. He's getting them to fly out. Well, I also want to try to stay on top of those high fastballs and find the gaps. Nine flyouts and right now four in a third innings. Another breaking ball, so he's gone from 0 2 to 3 2. And that breaking ball that sweeps down and away from a right handed batter that enticed him earlier, he's a little more patient on and now has a full count. And as you said, eight pitches, first time up, or excuse me, second time up, and he walked. See what Hannigan calls. Fastball coming down. Squared up. There's a bloop in the left center field. So Lorenzo on for the third time, and he has now been on base five times in this series with four hits, a walk, and three stolen bases. Yeah, that was a good spot. To put that ball. Hellickson did a nice job. He kept it in, so he jammed him. If he leaves that all over the plate, Lorenzo would have hit a gapper or maybe even a homer. But he'll take the base hit. See if he can get something going. Ripped a bag off in his last time when he got on base. Brad Boxberger has started to warm up in the Rays bullpen. He's the right hander who was a star at USC. See if Haas can get a hold of one. Keep his streak going. I remember when Hellickson started in a rookie in 2012 when he was the rookie of the year. Joe Madge said he had to control the running game better. He's been able to improve that. Kane ripped him off in the third. Lorenzo does not go and the ball gets away and Kane will be taking second base easily either on a wild pitch or a pass ball. So the second time that Kane has been in scoring position with nobody out. Wild pitch by Hellickson looked like a changeup down low couldn't Hagen couldn't keep it in front of him now he's in scoring position for Eric. He's a 241 hitter with a runner at second and beyond. Paul's a lot of family up from Miami. His brother Mike, I saw him in the hotel lobby, looked just like Eric. Just like him. And Eric says that Mike's so important into his success getting to the big leagues. He's still one of his top hitting instructors that he goes back to. He has a cage in the backyard in South Florida. Base hit left field. Kane had to hold up 
for a moment. He'll make it to third, but he had to wait to make sure the shortstop, Zobris, would be unable to take the baseball. Haas keeps his streak alive now at eight. Good swing now. Lorenzo, he, he, he that was a bad read. He got twisted up. Watch him. You, you already know where the shortstop's playing. And he just kind of hesitated. And whenever you, you do that, there's no chance to score. Well, Hellickson has been on the razor's edge just about every single inning, but has not cut himself yet. And out comes Joe Madden. And I wonder if he's going to go to Boxberger here. Well, obviously, he hasn't he said given, good job. Yeah, he hasn't given up a run yet. So Joe Madden, he knew it was coming. Got him out of there. This is our Chevy call to the bullpen. will go for KC tomorrow night in the final game of this road trip. Alex Cobb will be on the mound for the Rays, his record four and six with a 4-2-8 ERA. And you can see the pitch efficiency that Ventura has with only 27 walks against 80 strikeouts. And Brad Boxberger, who's pitched very well for the Rays this year, a 2-7 ERA, but even better, Rex lately, he has held opponents to a 123 batting average in 20 appearances since May 21st. It's been good. Joe Madden went to him. Obviously, Helkson hadn't given up a run. Kane at third. Hosmer at first. 89 to 95 with his fastball. Slider, curve, and a change. And obviously, they would love to get the double play. With Salvador Perez, the batter, he has flied out deep to center field and struck out swinging. First pitch change up. Second pitch fastball at 93, and he is a strikeout artist. He ranks fifth among all American League relievers with a 13.77 strikeouts per nine inning ratio. The club record is 12.6 by Grant Balfour back in 2008. Salvin was right on that one. To try it again. And he's down in the count one and two. This ball had a little life on it. Took off. We stay with that same pitch. Two balls, two strikes.
Look up, try to get something airborne. Royals had first and third with two out in the first, but Infante flied out. First and third, one out here in the fifth. And Salvi with a chopper to Zobras, only play first base, and the Royals take a 1 0 lead as Kane checks in from third. The wild pitch by Hellickson got Kane over to second base. And he moved up and was able to score on that ground ball. That's that was really not a bad idea. I mean, Salvi chopped it, got the run home. And that gives Perez 30 RBIs now in the year, and the Royals with seven players in their usual everyday lineup with 30 or more RBIs. They're the only teams in baseball that can say that. They have great balance up and down their lineup, but they like to have a little more thunder. They're still dead last in home runs with 51. Here's a guy with good power, Gordon, with 10 of them. The run charge to Hellickson. Osmer in scoring position. Another strike and Gordon down 0 2. Boxberger, a huge name in USC lore. Not only was Brad Boxberger a terrific pitcher at USC and the Reds' first round draft pick in 2009, but his dad, Rod, was the MVP of the College World Series back in 1978, playing for the great Rod Dato. Went to the same high school as Phil Hughes, Foothill High School in Tustin, California. Just barely outside, a ball and two strikes. It's kind of uh, an interesting fastball comes out of a different arm slot. Almost like he shot puts it up there. Outside corner perfectly located by Boxberger. But the Royals do take the lead on the ground out by Salvador Perez that scores Lorenzo Cain. Here at Tropicana Field, Vargas versus Hellickson. Both pitchers have dealt brilliantly. Hellickson gave up one run in four and a third innings, and Vargas nothing through his four innings of work. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors starters comparison. There are the numbers on Jason, who finally has a lead, and Hellickson has. 2014 debut went pretty well. Yeah, it did. And the reason that Madden took him out was that Salvi was coming up, and Salvi had really taxed his pitch count before 
and was close to getting a big hit in Joe Madden's mind. So it's up to the skipper. It's his team, and he pulled him out. Perez was able to get a ground out that gave the Royals the lead. Now they've got to hold on to it. And Vargas facing the bottom of the order. Ryan Hannigan, Kevin Kiermeyer, and then back to the top and Desmond Jennings. You know, most players that have any kind of service time in the majors go through some kind of eye-opening experience or some type of, uh, of setback in their career that it really helps them open their eyes. And for Vargas, he's in his seventh year. It was March 21st in 2008, about halfway through his career. He was throwing a bullpen, a little bullpen session in spring training, and he felt something in his left hip. Wasn't sure what it was. They went and checked it out. Sure enough, he had a torn hip labor. And he said that having to go through that surgery and, you know, and miss the whole entire season, he had time to think about things. Will I ever come back? Will I ever be the kind of guy that I believe I can be, the kind of pitcher? But he waited it out and got back. They healed him. And that's kind of an unusual injury for a pitcher. You hear a lot about labrum tears in the shoulders, and I was talking with head athletic trainer Nick Kinney about the, the labrum and the, and the shoulder and the hip, which one's worse. He said the, the, the shoulder labrum surgery is, is a lot harder to recover from. But it's uh, the labrum, it acts like a rubber seal to help the ball at the top of your thigh bone securely within your socket. It helps you hold it in there. So whenever there's a fray or a tear in there, you're going to experience pain, but they got to smooth it out to the surgery. But Vargas has, has endured that. And also, you mentioned the surgery he had last year, the blood clot. I mean, he's, he's had some issues in his career. Great pitch as he jammed him again and got Hannigan to pop it up. Escobar will take care of him for the first out of the fifth inning. Yeah, he had that blood clot surgery in his left armpit late June last year after feeling tingling in the middle finger before a June 17th start versus Seattle and missed seven weeks. But you really take a look at what he had done the previous three years. I mean, he was a workhorse. He averaged 205 innings from 2010 through 2012 with Seattle. And when he came back from that blood clot surgery last year, he pitched very well. And that's why Dayton Moore and his staff took a look at him. They've got all the medical reports and had their medical staff take a look at him as well. And they said he's good to go. And they signed him to a four year deal. And he has not disappointed. A win today would be his most victories before the All Star break in his career. It would be his ninth. Yeah, riding over on the bus with him yesterday, he was he was sharing just so openly. You know, he, he's a, he's a, kind of a throwback. He doesn't like to go to the ballpark early like most players do today. He likes to go around 3:30, you know, three o'clock. He says it's just not a lot for him to do. Another pop up, Escobar drifting out, and two outs. Hey, Royals fans, make sure to come out to the K on July 29th for Hunting and Fishing Night presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. This is perfect for you, HUD, and you get to meet the crew from Heartland Waterfowl and Heartland Bow Hunter. Plus, by purchasing this special ticket package, you receive an exclusive Royals themed fishing lure. Don't miss your opportunity to reel your next fish in the Royal way. For tickets and more information, visit Royals.com slash hunting and fishing. Oh man, I can see a big bass on the end of that thing. Hud, we have these two big bird houses in our backyards with these thin little metal poles that are at least six feet above the ground. We have raccoons climbing up those and taking out all of the bird seed. It's like, really? We got those thin posts to keep them. They are incredible little creatures. I thought you were going to give me a fishing story. No, I was going to. I was other wildlife. <laughs> That's okay. Giving you the raccoon story. It's beautiful. It's taking place in our neighborhood. It's all good. 
we, we put a sign out there saying raccoons please go here you'll be welcome and I gave your your address but they haven't gone yet the center field Kane will take care of Desmond Jennings and Jason Vargas with a one two three fifth inning. Hurry in for great ideas during the Dodge Summer Clearance Event by Five Hour Energy and by Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff, low price every day. It's getting dark in St. Petersburg, Florida on a beautiful evening. The Royals have a 1-0 lead on a ground out that scored Kane in the fifth and the rest, Jason Vargas. Five innings of shutout baseball. Boxberger will continue into the sixth inning of play and he will face Infante Mustakis and Butler if anybody gets on Raul Ibanez. And of course the sixth inning is our sonic slam inning. Our contestant is Richard Gardner from Independence if the Royals hit a home run in this inning. Richard will win four hundred dollars but if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the yard. Richard will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. I've always wondered why it has to leave the yard because it's much more difficult to hit an inside the park home run. I think you should at least get another hundred dollars for an inside the parker. Oh, that's a lot of work. A lot of running. Infante to center field that will drop for a hit and Omar now has a seven game hit streak. Our Ram drive of the game we're going to show with Mike Moustakis last year April 30th. Hit a big home run in the Sonic Slam inning off of this guy tomorrow starter Cobb. Oh I hope that's a preview of what we see tomorrow that was at the K. Early in the season last year Moose took him yard. And Moose would have played with Boxberger at USC because he received a full ride to USC before he was drafted by the Royals in the first round and signed with Kansas City. Let's see if Moose can get a big hit here. I'd like to see the energy. He was all fired up. Seven of his 10 home runs this year have come on the road. Moose is in a much better position. Remember at the beginning of the season where his right foot was on the chalk of the left handed batter's box. I mean he was wide open. Now, he starts that way now but he's closed back up again. And I knew it would just be a matter of time before he would get back closed up. It's just too much movement for him. Now his hands are in a really good position. His hands are ready to strike. You want to start in the most comfortable position you can. Hands loose relaxed arms 
Everything's relaxed because you have to react quickly. And you react quicker when you're loose. Like Moose. See how his hands are moving on that bat? But he's, he's in a comfortable starting spot right there with his hands. He floated that changeup right in the middle of the plate. Got away with one. On a fastball count. Squeezes that one off to the third baseman Longoria and they're able to get the five four three double play. That ball had a lot of spin on it and Longoria did a nice job of, of keeping it into his glove. It thought about spinning out. Cued it off the end of the bat. But it's on. Talked about the differences loose this year. He's running the ball out hard. Almost beat that out. The Royals with one run on seven hits, and Butler has two of them, both singles. Billy down 0 2, but Billy was down 0 2 and was able to fight back and get a base hit earlier in this game. The Rays bullpen doesn't have any big names that will wow you. They do have Grant Balfour, who was very strong for the Oakland A's last year, but the guy who should have gone to the All Star game, most deserving, was Jake McGee, who's become their closer. But Boxberger has done a great job in middle relief. There's Grant Balfour, who they're using in the setup role with McGee, now the closer. Eric Bedard, who was supposed to start tonight, moving to the bullpen. He's right there. Billy hits one in the air. Left center field. Jennings is there and the Royals are turned back in the sixth inning.
Holland going to the All-Star game. So is Salvador Perez next Tuesday with Alex Gordon. All three very deserving. And Wade Davis and Alcides Escobar also deserve to go. But every team could say that they had one guy that should have been there. But the Royals for the second straight year sending a trio of excellence to the All-Star game. This year's will be in Minnesota. And, of course, it will be on Fox one week from tonight. Yeah, it's an exciting moment. And just because it's Alex's second year in a row doesn't mean it doesn't take any of the excitement away. I was talking with his wife, Jamie, out at the pool today, and she said uh, that last year they really took care of the family. I asked her about the ticket situation. You know, everybody in the world wants a ticket to the All-Star game. She says, well, they were really good to our family, at being Alex's first. So they got about 15 tickets for the family. They took care of them. But this year, second year, Nah, that, not as much because they'll be somebody else's first time and Major League Baseball will try to take care of them as well. So they do uh, try to accommodate all the families that want to go. And there are 25 first year all stars. Yeah, so there's there's quite a few. But Jamie and Max and Sam, Alex's two kids and family, they'll all be there. Escobar go for it, but Zobris gets his first hit. Now has 11 hits in his last four plus games. The All Star voting isn't over quite yet. You can vote for the final player for each league roster until Thursday, July 10th at 4 o'clock Eastern. Go to Royals.com and cast your All Star game final vote for the final two All Stars for the game in Minnesota. Vote at Royals.com or on your mobile phone. Hard to. Uh I mean, all those guys are deserving. Richards for the Angels, but Kluber, after seeing him fresh, that guy. Well, I understand Chris Sale has the edge in the American League, and Justin Morneau has the edge in that final vote. They're all worthy. But Kluber, he's special, man. He's, he's developing into an ace. He sure looks like an ace against the Royals. Royals won two of three in Minnesota, lost two of three in Cleveland, and trying to take the first two here in Tampa Bay. Well, he's been able to come in on so many right handers with that fastball. The National League, more no, we told you, has the edge. Rizzo. And who would be your pick? No, Casey McGee has had an excellent season. In it. And he's out down south there in Miami coming back from Japan has a better idea hitting like most guys do when they come back from there. He's having a good season. Yeah, Giancarlo Stanton is the only man on that Marlins roster to go and he was upset really feeling that there should have been two Marlins at least. And Miami came into tonight's play third in the National League East with a record of 43 and 46. Geyer has singled and popped up. Zobris is an occasional base stealer. He's got four this year, been caught three times. Geyer runs well, be hard to double up. Well, he, his breaking ball has been really sharp tonight as well. He wanted to drop that in the back door, though. He wanted that for a strike. Shook his head. That wasn't where he wanted that one. Base hit. Zobris going to third, going to second, and safe there is Geyer. Hey, there's that speed. Alex, he, he came up with it in left center field. And he knew right away that he wanted to try to at least try to keep Geyer in a double play situation. So he had to run a long ways. He spun, looked, and then he threw it into second base. Couldn't get it there in time. Good hustle double. So how will they pitch Evan Longoria through the years, their top run producer? The veteran. 
from Long Beach State. 11 home runs, 40 RBIs. He's going to have to go to work now. That was a changeup that was left out over the middle. Last base hit. Royals back. They'll give up a run to get an out. Ball one. Aaron Crow has started to throw down in the Kansas City pen as Vargas nearing 100. Base hit right field. A good pitch. A breaking ball down. Two runs are coming home. And it's 2 1 Tampa Bay. That's a nice swing by Longoria. He, he waited till the ball break broke and, and it was down stayed with it stuck it to right field. That's an excellent swing. Pitch wasn't badly located either. That's a better piece of hitting and no chance to get Geyer. So the Rays have their first lead of this series. They were beaten last night six nothing as Shields worked seven shutout innings and struck out ten. Vargas excellent through five but three straight hits by the Rays have scored two. Now Loney. Vargas been very stingy when it comes to giving up runs on the road. He entered tonight with the top ERA on the road 1.52 so kind of got to him here in this inning early. Well they're much like the Royals there's nothing that's overwhelming about their offense but thing that their pitching keeps them in just about every single game. They had a very poor beginning the first two months, but recovered well in the last one. This is the third time through the order for Jason. Loney one for two. Loney's ground into 11 double plays this year. Two and two. The Rays certainly know how to win. Uh, Grant Balfour has started to warm in the Rays bullpen. Only two teams have won 90 or more games each of the last four years. Texas is one. The Rays are the other. Kane will grab this one. And that's the first out of the bottom of the sixth. Vargas looked back at Infante said all right ground ball back to me I'm working with you got to know ahead of time where, where you're going to throw the ball if it comes to you especially if you're a pitcher and the middle infielders need to know as well Forsyth has flied out and struck out strike one. him up. Great pitch down in the zone. Couldn't do much with it. And Infante backing up will take care of Forsyth for the second out. Meantime, the Tigers are blowing out the Dodgers 12 to 5 now in the fifth inning. And remember, the Dodgers at one time had a 5 nothing lead. Hey, good concentration by Infante. You got to really keep your eye on that ball here at the drop.
Here is Sean Rodriguez doubled. And grounded out. Ball one. The White Sox have a 5 3 lead on Boston in the seventh inning. And Chicago was able to take game one of that series last night. A local guy, Scott Carroll, got the win. Local guy to Kansas City in the Midwest. Cleveland meantime has a 5 3 lead on the Yankees that game has gone to the seventh inning. Cleveland found out today that they'll likely miss Michael Bourne for the next month so they acquired Chris Dickerson from Pittsburgh for cash yesterday. You got to do something. Three and one. Careful with his pitch Rodriguez he's got some pop four out of his eight home runs have come off lefties. Barely missed outside but he walks Rodriguez and that will move Longoria into scoring position. And Ned Yost will make a move here as he's thrown 109 pitches. And another right handed batter is coming up. So they will go to Aaron Crow here. A little offense going to help pick Vargas up here in this one. As well as he's been pitching, he deserves some runs. He's a pro. Here's our Chevy call to the bullpen, Aaron Crow. Five then gave up two in the sixth inning was able to get two outs but a walk to Rodriguez lifts him from the game and now the Royals go to Aaron Crow pitching in his 40th game this year has a 2 5 5 earned run average. Last worked the ninth inning Friday at Cleveland with a man aboard and retired the final two hitters one by way of a strikeout to close out the Royals seven to one victory. Slider in the dirt, good block by Salvador Perez. Yeah, that's his premium pitch. Sometimes he'll, he'll try to go with that two seam fastball to set that pitch up. Yeah, and you really got the feeling that Hannigan was going to swing on that first pitch if it was close. The runner in scoring position, he's going to try to do that. He's hitting 318. The runner in scoring position, Hannigan. 
time called. The Royals lead the season series three victories to one and have won 13 of the last 17 against the Rays. Right down the middle. Had a little nice little movement in the last minute. Had some hair on it. Two on, two out. Escobar will go across the diamond and he'll get his man there, but the Rays score two on a clutch base hit by Evan Longoria. 2 1. Rays. Tomorrow, tickets for less. We'll be having a new hot, hot deal every hour on the hour starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. You will not see better prices than these all year. Go to ticketsforless.com tomorrow to see the deal of the hour. Tickets for less has given me a sneak peek at tomorrow's 9 a.m. deal. Chiefs tickets starting at $5 each. So good stuff there. And here, another impressive start. For Jason Vargas, we'll see if the Royals can score for him now. But the two earned runs allowed ties a season high on the road. He's never allowed more than two earned runs in a road start. And his ERA right now, 168 on the road. So it actually jumped from 152 to 168, but he has been unbelievable for the Royals. And he gives up two here. And now on the other side, we hear that head-banging music that we used to hear in Oakland. That can only mean that Grant Balfour is in listening to some of his favorite music. The 36-year-old veteran from down under Sydney, Australia. Just every once in a while, Joe, could you give me a little Sinatra? Maybe a little Tony Bennett. <laughs> Stay with him, ACDC. It's Raul Ibanez. Balfour, he's got a pretty good fastball. He'll run it up there, 90, 95 miles an hour. Got a good slider. Occasional curve and a change, but those are his two main pitches. Ibanez, one for seven in his career off of Balfour. Very emotional guy. Great closer for the A's last year with 38 saves, and he started as the Rays closer this year. But fell on some hard times as he's 0 and 2. He did get 11 saves, but his ERA is over 5. So they moved him to a setup role and made Jake McGee their closer. Definitely trying to stay out of the middle of the plate and in on Ibanez. 
tie it up with one swing. Raul four home runs this year three with the Angels one with the Royals in Minnesota. Three twenty two down that right field line. Out of play. So I don't know if we'll see any ninety fives out of Balfour. Haven't seen him in a while. He has a one eight ERA over his last ten appearances. Struck out both batters he faced on Saturday at Detroit in relief of Chris Archer. And the Rays were able to take three of four from the Tigers. Three and two. He's got a good slider. He hadn't used it yet. Left side. Geyer is there. He'll make the catch and one away in the seventh inning. Number two, Mercedes Escobar. Eski had the one base hit yesterday, but it was one of fortune given by the scorekeeper when. He hit one sharply at the third baseman Evan Longoria who is usually sure handed and uh, botched the baseball it was ruled a hit. Escobar two for three with a double in his career off of Balfour like to get something started. Royals scored a lot late last night. They scored two in the eighth and two in the ninth. Hopefully, we'll see some late fireworks in this one. But the Rays pitching has been very good. Hellickson, in his first start of the year, gave up just one run in four and a third innings. Boxberger did a terrific job in his one and two thirds innings. And now Balfour. I'm a little surprised that the Royals didn't get to Hellickson. For saving his sliders for Escobar. Eski chases a bad pitch in the dirt. He'll strike out. And we've been seeing a little bit too much of that lately with the Royals chasing pitches out of the strike zone. They are a little bit over anxious. Our AT&T fan photo comes from Bruce out at the K and we'll be back at the K this Thursday against the first place Detroit Tigers. It will be Guthrie and Smiley on Thursday Duffy and Sanchez Friday. Saturday Shields against Porcello and Sunday Vargas against Verlander then the All Star break and we go on the road to Boston and Chicago after the break so last time to see the Royals of the K for a while. There is a ball struck to the right side and a dive and it will not reach it and Kane might get three. He is at third with a triple. Kiermaier playing right field with his hair on fire wants to catch everything. When you leave your feet out there, there's no one backing you up. So with two outs, he made a good effort. Kane ends up with a triple. This time he was able to hit the cutoff man. Yep, it's his third triple. Fourth time that Kane has been on. He is three for three with a pair of singles and now a triple. And now he's hoping Eric Hosmer can come through with a clutch base hit. Eric singled his last time up to extend his hit streak to eight straight games. The Rays will play Eric straight up. That's Lorenzo Kane's ninth three hit game this year. 
Rex, if I'm to, to compare any teams with the shiftiness that we've seen in baseball, I would have to say the Houston Astros shift their infield more than any team in the game. And the Rays, from what we've seen in the first two games, shift their defense the least. Straight up. That's how they're playing them. For a lot of pull hitters, yep. too. And it's a relief. Talking with Moose before the game, I said, Moose, they're not shifting on you. He goes, I know. I, I like it. So he's okay with it. Lorenzo Cain be ready to score on any kind of ball that bounces. Well, when you shift that much, the pitcher must be able to execute. If they call for the pitch inside and it's away and the guy takes it to left field, well, the shift doesn't work at all. Two and one. Balfour been pretty good against lefties this inning here. He's hitting his spots on the outside corner. Trying to force him to go to the opposite field. Haas is okay with that. Hosmer with that long wingspan. It has been 90 at bat since his last home run. That was against Rienzo at Chicago back on June 15. Three balls, one strike. See Longoria, he's way off at third base over here. He's he's sitting out over there. Renzo has plenty of time to get down that line. Balfour not going from the windup. If he did, he might consider stealing at home straight steal. But right now, three and one's a good hitting count. Outside ball four. The Royals now have runners on the corners with two out for Salvador Perez, who has driven in the only run with a ground out back in the fifth inning for KC. Second walk for the Royals. Kane walked in the third, and now Hosmer has walked in the seventh. Salvador one for three in his career against Balfour. See if he can pick up Vargas right here with a base hit. Right handers only bat 200 against Balfour. Ball one great block by Hannigan or this game would be tied. Poof. Right in glove. Swung at a bad ball, and it's a 1 1 count. They struck out Escobar with one in the dirt and got Perez to chase one low. Lay off of those. He's going to keep throwing down there. Elevation gets you hurt. Another bad pitch. Well out of the strike zone. And Salvador now talking to himself. And Dale Swain has been preaching. Get the ball up. Royals getting themselves out in this inning. When you're young, you want so badly to drive in that key hit. Help your club tie it or take the lead. That pressure's on Balfour. Kane tripled with two out. Osmer walk.
Alfor has it. And the Rays hold on to their 2 to 1 lead going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Authority of the Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the uh, accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Royals. There is the Ray Tank way out in right center field. I'm Steve. Rex, Joel, and Jeff have joined us tonight. And of course, Jeff and Joel will have that Boulevard post game show after. The ball game and Aaron Crow hopefully will keep the Rays offense quiet in the bottom of the seventh inning and then Gordon and Vonte and Moustakas can hopefully do some damage in the top of the eighth. Kevin Kiermeyer is 0 for 2. 24 years old out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. There is a strike. Kiermaier, he dove after that triple by Lorenzo Kane down the line, and he had some. Looked like he was nursing some burns on his forearms, and jammed his neck. That ball shot off the glove of Hosmo right to Infante for a nice 3-4-3. Three, three. First out. Haas checking out those that leather making sure there's no holes he thought he had it this what must have went right off the end of it Infante quickly picks it up a little spin throw good to keep Kiermaier off the base back to the top of the order in Desmond Jennings who was struck out walked and flied out Check out Phantom Cam. It looked like it went right through Haas's glove. It did. That ball yeah. was smoked. Yeah, no wonder. He, he was checking out. Obviously, there's. It didn't break a lace. Maybe it did, but he was checking it out. If it had, he would probably go to his reserve glove. Make sure you keep those strings nice and tight. He Come goes with that soft leather first baseman's glove. We'll see a lot of first basemen. And it's really stiff. He 
He wears the gold. Got to make sure to check check the laces. Looper towards right. In comes Ibanez to make a basket catch. Two fine plays to start this inning. One by Hosmer Infante and also Ibanez. Good concentration. He had to come in on contact or he wouldn't have made it. For Ben Zobrist. He singled and scored the tying run on the base hit by Longoria that plated both Ben and Brandon Geyer. Rays averaged over five runs per game on that road trip, winning nine of 11. But they were shut out last night. And they've gotten just enough tonight for a 2 1 lead. Kane will take care of Zobrist and Crow with a 1 2 3 seventh inning. Royals trail two to one as Panera takes us around the league and after a five nothing lead in the first the Dodgers give up 12 straight yikes Cleveland winning five to three White Sox on top of the Red Sox five to three Minnesota and Seattle coming up later tonight with the Red Hawk Chris Young on the hill our Mazda game break takes us to Cleveland and Michael Brantley goes deep now watch the fan here closely and try to grab this ball. Oh man, he wore it. Home run for Brantley and loss of a half beer for that Indians fan. What's interesting, guys, on this one is Masahiro Tanaka, who in his last start gave up a career high four runs against Minnesota, tops that tonight a career high five. So is ERA from 2 1 0 to 2 5 1. And he's still listed as a rookie. I don't think so. Well, El Campeon comes on for the Tampa Bay Rays. That is Joel Peralta, and it means the champion, and that's what Joe Madden gave him that nickname. He loves him, a great competitor, rubber arm, can pitch practically every day. This is his 41st game this year. 88 to 91 with his fastball slider, and he's got a pretty good split finger. He will throw a quick pitch once in a while. Tries to dot that outside corner. It's a corner that has been given a lot by Jeff Nelson.
Well, the Royals are hoping that one of the many members of the bullpen they're seeing isn't on their game. Boxberger and Balfour certainly were. Joel with a 389 earned run average, pitched a scoreless eighth inning on Friday at Detroit. Brian Roberts took him deep back on June 30th. Game tying home run. Wells would love that here from Alex. And he hits it to center field, but not deep enough as Jennings drifts back near the warning track to pull it down for out number one. Well, the Royals are successful after seven innings, but so is Tampa Bay. The Royals at 38 and 1 lead the American League, handing that baseball to Davis and Holland. Tampa Bay at 33 and 1. It is said many times I managed to get the ball to Wade Davis and Greg Holland somehow with the lead. Those numbers indicate good bullpens in this era now we're in. You've got to have a great pin to win. The lefty is Bueno, the righty is Davis. Hit right field. The Royals have a start in this eighth inning with one out. Infante representing the tying run at first base. If you're going to give him that hole over there. He'll you give him a pitch. He'll, he'll shoot for it, and he got it. So Moose is up looking for his first hit of this series. He had a walk and a sacrifice fly last night, but has popped up twice and hit into a 5 4 3 double play his last time up. Once again, the Rays do not shift for the left handed pull hitter. And it's in the dirt ball one. Moose 0 for 3 against Peralta in his career. See him up. By the way, Rex, we should make mention the fact that the Royals, with a couple of moves made today, they signed Joe Saunders to a minor league contract. He is reporting to Omaha, longtime veteran left hander, and also signed yesterday Paul Yanish, a very talented defensive infielder. Both at Triple A Omaha. Moose with a mighty rip and misses. It's a 2 1 count. A little bit too mighty. Gotta pull his head a little on that. Oh, had a little bit of movement away from it. Peralta, Peralta, excuse me, has allowed seven home runs, and that's tied for fourth most among major league relievers. So he'll give you a, a chance to drive one. Three balls and one strike. The 
knocked it back and out of play. A fastball that caught enough of the plate. Moves had an opportunity to drive one, but now the count is full at three and two. Yeah, he, it looks like he's pulling off of it a little. Lefty's hitting 253 against Joel. Right handers only 190. There's a right hander waiting on deck in Billy Butler. Just keep it going. Doesn't need to hit a homer here. Just use a large part of the field, put it in play. Take the walk and get Infante into scoring position if Peralta misses. Peralta unsure if Infante is going to go with a 3 2 count and one out. Does not go and Moose hits a base hit to right field and Ponte stops at second base. That'll work. Good AB. Stayed in the middle. Didn't try to do too much with this pitch. It was down low and he went down and got it. Use your hands right there. He's. Went down there and now Billy coming up here is 0 for 4 against Peralta. And Peralta's going to try to get him to roll over into a double play. And you'd have to say that Billy is due. Now his singles have been nice, but what he wants is RBIs. He has not driven in a run in his last eight plus games. Eight plus this one and has two on. One Infante represents the tying run, the other Mustakis the go ahead run. Ball one. You might get a steady diet of those. Well, the Royals were stretching the strike zone a bit with runners in scoring position. We saw that in the last inning when Escobar swung at pitch in the dirt and Perez did twice. Well, he wants to get back up in the top of that order. He's going to have to produce. That slider was up. Jake McGee has gotten up in the Rays bullpen, and I'm just wondering if Billy keeps things going. Would Jake be in for Raul Ibanez? You would think Ibanez is four for nine off of Peralta. And McGee just stretching right now, and now beginning to throw. Billy with a high fly ball deep to left and Geyer backing up he'll make the catch and Fonte tags does not go and the throw comes to second base. Just beat him inside. Try to fastball that's right down the middle and up. Perfect pitch for Billy. Just can't. Get one over the fence. So we will see the move. It will be Jake McGee. Now the Royals could counter and go with Danny Valencia. But a pitching change here in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Royals with two on and two out. And we'll be right back.
Billy Butler got beat by a Peralta fastball. We'll show it to you slowed down, and we'll see where that ball got in on him. He couldn't quite get the barrel out. That ball is is not quite on the barrel, and when you barrel it, it's it's got more pop. It's going to get there, but he just couldn't quite get the barrel there. Beat him just a tick. So here we're seeing a guy that many expected to go to the All-Star game. A 3-0 record with five saves, a 1-1-6 ERA. His fifth save came on Sunday at Detroit. And he might be staring in the face of a four-out save in this one because Jake very likely would come back for the ninth when the Royals are hitting. First things first, as Jake has to face Danny Valencia. You know what he has done against Southpaws, hitting 365 this year. First pinch hit opportunity off the bench for Ned. And he's in the game. That's right. I mean, swinging early. McGee with a terrific fastball. His average fastball velocity is 96 and a half miles an hour, highest among American League lefty relievers. I got him cutting his fastball a little bit. 92 to 98. Slider and a curve. Driven to right. Back goes the right fielder. He's there to make the catch. And the Royals threat is turned back. Come in the game and play defensively in center field for the Royals, and Lorenzo Kane will move from center to right field. The Royals have said had several opportunities in this game, but they left two in the first, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the seventh, and two in the eighth. Only one inning did they not leave runners on base, and they bring on Bueno out of the bullpen. He bunts and it is a beauty no chance to get Brandon Geyer who has his third hit of the game and boy did Joe Madden took a good time to get this guy in the three spot. Well, he's another action player they're trying to develop. He's got a little pop too but this is a good touch there great pitch to do it on high fastball away right away from him is able to get his hands extended. And that's a pocket ball. No chance. Even if he picks it up cleanly, you can't get him. He's too fast. Guy are three for four stealing bases this year. Royals want to keep it at one. They've had a tough time in the clutch in this one.
Longoria has driven in both runs. Geyer does not go. Perez with the snap toss and barely back in time is Geyer. Nice attempt. Geyer, he scrambled back to the bag. Barely got back in there. That throws down on the base. Hosmer will put the tag on it. Longo swings away. Let's go back to the sixth inning. Longoria with two on and nobody out. Oh, great pitch. Yeah, man, nice piece of hit there. He just went down and shot to right field just like he wanted to. Pick up the two runs. Didn't try to pull it. Went with it. Difference, difference maker. One swing of the bat. Brandon Geyer in 2010 in the Southern League, he, he stole 30 bases out of 33. So he, he's got it in him. They're, they're trying to develop him. Mentioned it earlier in the game. Become one of their everyday guys and change that base stealing category down. With some guys that can run. Rays with more power than the Royals. They've hit 24 more home runs than KC. And they also walk a lot more. Another snap toss to first base. They've walked almost 100 more times than the Royals. And their patience was able to get Vargas's pitch count up. He was nearly 110 pitches. In five and two thirds innings, when Ned Yost lifted him, grounded a short. Eski gets oh, one. Oh man! Safe at first is Longoria. Oh yeah. Not a good decision there. Got to know the speed of the runner. Escobar knows that. Brandon Geyer, you know, he might be new in the league, but he outran Escobar to the base. And Fonte, he was there. And he just misjudged the speed of Geyer, and he couldn't get either one of them. A little mental mistake there. Yeah, the Royals offensively are not hitting in the clutch. They're one for 10 with runners in scoring position in this game. And they also have struggled in other areas defensively decision making. And you just want to get it out there any way you can. And now you've got a veteran like James Loney. And even though he's a middle of the order hitter, we have seen him drop several bunts. At this point in the game, that may not be a bad move. Loney does not have a sacrifice hit this year. Watch Escobar kick at the dirt. He's still upset with himself. Oh, 
Deja hit. This will score Geyer. And Goria goes to third, is held there. And Loney has his 44th RBI of the season. Fastball inner half. Loney looked like he was looking inside. Twentieth double. Still nobody out. And the Royals pay for their mistake here in the eighth inning. The Rays threatening to bust this game open. Forsyth 0 for 3. Royals infield in. Strike one. He'll mix in some changeups to get some righties. Infield in, he wants a ground ball, but to keep it down. Geyer dropped the bunt base hit. Goria reached on the fielder's choice. And Loney then doubled in a run to make it 3 1 Raves. Rodriguez waiting his turn on deck. Small crowd at the drop tonight, a little over 12,000. This is just a team that knows how to win, even though they're 41 and 51 this year. They've suffered a lot of injuries, losing two starting pitchers, Matt Moore. We had Hellickson gone for the longest time. He's back now. That'll get a run home. Kane makes the catch. And they do just what they need to do to make the Royals pay. It's four to one. Escobar knows he should have gone to Infante on that ground ball struck by Longoria, but he thought he could make a 6 3 double play. Instead, he got no outs, and the Rays got two runs. Yep, infield's got to stay in. Field remains in with one out. This is a team that had no 300 hitters last year and only one player who hit more than 20 home runs, Longori, with 32, and yet they made it to the postseason last year. Rex, quite frankly, there's only like a couple of guys who have certain positions. Just about everybody else in the roster can play everywhere. Yeah, it's versatile. And Madden, he loves that. It's a, a manager's delight to be able to have somebody he can swing in different areas and put in different spots for him. It's a luxury. These players are hard to find. Rodriguez to right field. Kane runs out of room 
and almost winds up in the stands. This is the one able to slow down enough, but he's able to catch himself. Look at that athleticism. He's an athlete. I almost think in this situation, you might want to let that go, even if it was in within reach. Ooh. Yeah, because Bueno comes right back and strikes out Rodriguez. No way Kane would make the catch and be able to get it home to catch Loney at third. Yeah. Didn't happen that way though. He's got two outs here to see if he can finish him off himself. Ryan Hannigan tonight hasn't had much success offensively, but Rexy's done a great job blocking balls in the dirt every time Hellickson or one of the members of the bullpen threw one down low with a man in scoring position. He does a nice job back there. He's getting more reps than Jose Molina. Ball one. The inning started innocently with a bunt base hit. And then Escobar's poor decision on the ground ball to short. He didn't realize Geyer's speed was that great. And instead of getting two outs or even one, he got none. And two runs followed. Two balls and no strikes. Royals have one more tomorrow night here at the Trop. Ventura for KC. Cobb goes for the Rays. And then we head home to face first place Detroit for a four game series Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three balls and no strikes. Maybe he wants a piece of the lefty, Kevin Kiermeyer. He's not, his ball's moving away, and staying off the plate. He misses on all four pitches and walks Hannigan. And now we'll face Kiermeyer. When the Royals bat in the top of the ninth inning, they'll have Escobar, Kane, and Hosmer scheduled a hit, followed by Salvador Perez. Kiermeyer lined out in the seventh inning, but it was a line drive that went right through the glove of Eric Hosmer, skipped to Omar Infante. And he threw it back to Haas and Moustakas with a nice play and Escobar, excuse me, Eric Hosmer with a sensational pick at first base. That will end the eighth inning. Two run score. Escobar has a chance to help himself and his team by getting.
As promised earlier, it's Miller time. We'll see one of the top young rookie right-handers in the game in Jordano Ventura. He with the electric fastball that has touched over 102 miles an hour this year. Look at his expression on this play. Oh, oh, my guy out there. Oh, and the Rays have seen him before. Have to tune their bats up. Royals do all they can to get to Alex Cobb and try to capture the series before they head home. Alex Cobb a little like Jeremy Hellickson who we saw today. He has exceptional control always around the plate. And the Royals have to be a little more disciplined with their swing. They were able to win yesterday 6 nothing, but only one run tonight and one for 10 with runners in scoring position. Escobar will lead it off. Four runs on eight hits for the Rays. One run on ten hits for the Royals. Greg Holland begins to throw in the Royals pen. Obviously he'll be needed if Casey ties it or takes the lead. And McGee comes way inside on Eski. Got to look for that fastball. Valencia did a nice job. I mean, if he puts that ball in the gap, could have got some runs, but he hit it right at him. Yeah, if he put it in the gap, Wade Davis would have been out there in that bottom of the eighth inning. That's a good pinch hit opportunity. McGee has had one career four out save. That was June 28th against Baltimore. Well, this is a guy who was a former starter, as a matter of fact, his first few years in the Rays organization that's all he did for seven pro years he was a starting pitcher until Madden moved him into the bullpen and now he is the Rays closer three one count Royals need to get somebody on to start a rally but they've had plenty on to start rallies They've had base runners every single inning. Three and two. Rays have not retired the Royals in order in tonight's ball game. In their strike three call. Escobar is saying, you know, you, you didn't give him the first one inside. Now you gave him that one. I have an argument. Let's see what these previous pitches are. He's trying to get him inside. Got the call. So now McGee will face Lorenzo Kane, the one guy they have not been able to get out in this contest. He has singled, walked, stolen a base, singled, scored the Royals' only run, and tripled in the seventh. This guy's got an explosive fastball, and it, it comes out of his hand free and easy. It's amazing how many starting pitchers, as starters, they throw in the low 90s, then they move the bullpen. Mid to upper 90s because they're no longer pacing themselves. They're just attacking. Yep, he's just challenging. That's a four seam grip. Straight over the top. Challenging hitters. That kind of gas, you could do that. Up the middle, a base hit. So Kane, a perfect four for four. And that ties his career high with four hits for the seventh time. He's done it twice in the last two weeks. Fourth time this year. Fourth time this year that he's had four hits in one game. That batting average continues to climb over the 315 mark. He left the slider up. Royals need another on to bring the tying run to the plate. Eric Hosmer's been on twice with a single and a walk. Oh. 
11 hits now for Kansas City but just one run. One and two. Lefties. Are batting 220 actually a higher average than right handers right handers only batting 141 until Kane shot one up the middle. See if he stays with that fastball or he comes with a little slider here. About that by Hosmer right down the line. Kane rounds second on his way to third, and Hosmer into second base with a one out double. Boy, that one was perfectly placed right down the line off the end of the bat. Better believe it any way you can. Stay with that fastball way out. Haas just reached out and touched it. That's all. You know, he was off balance, the pitch was away from him. That's all you can do. He kept it fair. That's a double in three straight games after he had gone 18 without an extra base hit. Keep it going. Tying run at the plate in Salvador Perez. So we can look for that fastball. Jump on one. Now you go back to that Escobar play in that eighth inning. That could have been two outs resulted in none and two runs scored to make it a 4 1 game. Perez with a base hit up the middle. Kane will score. Hosmer will score to make it 4 to 3. Three straight hits off Jake McGee who's the best reliever in the Rays bullpen. Beautiful thing looking fastball got him one. And just tried to meet it. Went right up the middle good base hit. Picked up a couple of runs that's right there. Short to the ball. Salvi will come out for a pinch runner. And that will be Christian Cologne. And the Royals are not done. They have no quit in them. Putting a little rally going. Putting it together. Yeah, that's the one thing about Kansas City. They don't quit. I mean, they will fight. They may swing at some bad pitches. And obviously, they made a poor fielding decision in the bottom half of the eighth inning. But as Joe Madden was telling us before the ball game, he's very impressed with Kansas City because they play hard for nine innings. Royals have 17 come from behind wins this year. Hopefully they can make it 18. I was talking to Scout Pat Burrell, who is watching this game and obviously a, a fine player for the Philadelphia Phillies for many years, and he thought. The addition of Raul Ibanez was terrific. He said, you know, even though the Royals have players who have been in the big leagues now three years, like Mustakas and Hosmer and Perez, he said, they're still very young. And it's the veterans that really are able to get you to the promised land to make that extra step. Ibanez has been to the postseason for 44 games. Cologne, he's not a, a burner as far as a base dealer goes. So maybe Gordon should just hit it out. Well, he takes a swing and a miss, and it's a one two count. Alex, good numbers. Certainly, Cologne can score in a gapper. Outfielders are fairly deep. Upstairs and it's a 2 2 count. McGee came in the eighth inning and Danny Valencia hit the ball hard and 
sent the right fielder Kiermaier all the way back to the warning track to pull it down. He struck out Escobar looking, but then three straight hits by Kane Hosmer and Perez made it close. Here's a ground ball to first. Loney will look at second and take the play at first. And now the Royals have the tying run in scoring position with two out. Loney thought about it, but at this time of the game, outs are more important than getting the lead runner. He didn't want to make a mistake and throw it off the off a of cologne, maybe hit him and you know, just keep keep things worse. So you know he, he, he did the right thing. Fonte pretty trustworthy up here in a situation like this. He's a great fastball hitter. McGee, that's what he likes to throw. A majority of them. Royals were having a rough time during their homestand, but Infante sent them on the road in glorious fashion with the Royals' first walk off this year. Beating the Angels and taking two of three from Anaheim. Strike one. Fonte ready to go. Strike. This nice short swing, compact, put it in play. Try to beat Cologne. S nobody covering at second base or holding Cologne tight, so he can get a good secondary lead. Kiermeyer in right field has a strong arm. Right-handers only had 13 hits off McGee until the night, and then Kane had the solid single and Perez the two RBI single. Royals down to their last strike. McGee working in Fonte up in the zone. A little bit out of the zone for him and in. Looked like a riser. The same pitch and get him to chase. It came too hard in at 98 miles an hour. Great location. He puts a fastball down out over the plate. They could tie it up. Nothing but hard stuff. That's it. He's taking his chances. As that's what closers do. He has already thrown 25 pitches on the evening. Fonte wants to square up number 26. He struck him out. And the Rays take game two by a final of four to three. Victoria was the key guy with a couple of RBIs, and he also reached on a critical play in the eighth inning. Where the Rays scored two runs to take a 4-1 lead. Almost got it back. 